In the 19th and early 20th centuries, American cities began building streetcar lines out from their urban cores, allowing those with means to settle outside the city and commute to work. These lines soon gave rise to booming small towns on the outskirts of major metropolitan areas, which became known as streetcar suburbs. With time, the rise of the automobile and the conversion of most streetcar lines to bus routes meant that towns built by the streetcar melted into the wider suburban sprawl. But today, you can still visit one in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Join me today on a trip to media. We board the 101 trolley at the 69th Street Transportation Center. My Norris Town Line train is late, so we only have about 30 seconds to catch the trolley, or at least that's how it would have been if the trolley was on time. <sighs> we love you, SEPTA. As it is, we make it on board with plenty of time to spare. Riding southeast, it becomes clear why the 101 was never replaced with bus service, the way most Philadelphia streetcars were. These cars use a dedicated right-of-way for most of their route, winding through the woods and passing historic Red Arrow trolley stations. Other than the closely packed stations and single-car trains, it feels more like a light rail service than a true streetcar. Or at least, that's the case until we get to media. Getting off at Providence Road Station, we can see that the trackage changes dramatically at this point. No longer is it a double-tracked line in a dedicated right-of-way. Instead, the line continues as a single track straight down the middle of State Street. And I don't mean the streetcars use a median. In a design that's rare in America, and possibly the world, the tracks literally sit on top of the center line of the street, and in between streetcar operations, cars straddle the tracks, like so. Signs along State Street advise drivers to yield to the streetcar, and as we can see here, that's exactly what happens. Because of this, it probably takes nerves of steel to drive the 101, although I'm sure having a car body of steel helps a lot. Walking into downtown media, it becomes clear that the town loves its streetcar. Streetcar-related iconography appears along the very walkable State Street core, the town is full of local and small chain businesses and restaurants, and on Sundays it hosts a small farmer's market. I stopped at the brand new Sauka, Sauka bubble tea location in between shots. Special shout out to the folks there for making me some passion fruit tea and subscribing to my channel. Indeed, there's a strong international flavor to State Street's businesses, perhaps a consequence of media's being America's first town to achieve fair trade certification. At the end of the line, just after Orange Street, the 101 trolley ends. Yes, it just ends. There's no turning loop or anything. You may have noticed that the 101 cars have cabs on each end, unlike SEPTA's subway surface trolleys, and that's because of this design. Since there aren't any actual buffers, it's technically possible for the trolleys to overrun the tracks. I couldn't find any information on this, but let me know in the comments if this has ever happened. Overall, I enjoyed my brief visit to media via the 101 trolley, and I would encourage you guys to stop by as well. Wonderfully transit-oriented places like media are rare these days, especially outside of urban cores. But given that it's literally in the town logo, I don't think media's streetcar service will be disappearing anytime soon. Special shout out to Julia Kenny for suggesting this video, and apologies for teasing it for the past two videos. Be sure to subscribe to Classy Whale, and take care until the next one.